diversity of human populations in the world today is immense. Their access to resources varies remarkably. Their population size, demographic outlook, social structure, economic potential, political interests, stability of governments, military power and international alliances are different for literally each of the nearly 200 countries and territories and their inhabitants. In such a fragmented world, in which each national state is trying to pursue its own agenda, is it even possible to define goals for the entire humanity that each country in the world would be willing to agree on? At the turn of the millennium, the United Nations organization tried to achieve just that, define a set of universally approved goals that all of its member states would sign up to. It was expected from national governments to show political commitment and reach the agreed targets by the year 2015. Those goals became widely known as Millennium Development Goals. What were the eight goals that everyone seemed to agree on? It appears that we would all like to live in the world in which every human has daily access to food and at least some money to get by. Therefore, eradicating hunger and extreme poverty was a great goal to start with. Then, to acknowledge the importance of education in later life, the second goal asked that each human should complete primary education. This gave rise to another truly progressive goal, the third one, which was to empower women everywhere and promote gender equality. Issues that were directly or indirectly related to global health featured prominently among the MDGs. The fourth and fifth goals were rather easy to agree on. Children and pregnant women should not be dying from preventable causes and their global mortality should be substantially reduced. The sixth goal was to combat pandemic infectious diseases such as HIV AIDS, malaria, tuberculosis and others. The seventh goal recognized that our resources on the planet are limited, so it called for ensuring sustainability of our environment. Finally, the eighth goal called for increased global collaboration and partnership to achieve acceptable levels of development in all countries. These clearly defined goals mobilized the funders, experts, policymakers, and people on the ground, such as program managers and implementers. Progress was being measured and monitored, plans developed and discussed. Over the 25-year period between 1990 and 2015, many important results have been achieved. The proportion of undernourished people in developing regions was reduced from 23% to 13%, while those living in absolute poverty decreased from 50% to 14%. Meanwhile, primary school enrollment rate reached 91%. A lot of progress has been made in achieving gender equality in access to all levels of education. At the same time, the average proportion of women in parliament has nearly doubled in the world, but it is still inadequate because only one in five members are women. Large gains have been made on ensuring environmental sustainability with ozone-depleting substances virtually eliminated more than 90% of global population gaining access to improved water and proportion of urban population living in slums reduced from 40% to 30%. About 95% of the world population acquired mobile phone signal and nearly a half gained access to the internet. Finally, official development assistance from the wealthy countries more than doubled over the 25 years amounting to $135 billion in 2015. Among the three goals most relevant to global health, child mortality has been reduced by more than a half and maternal mortality by 45%. Massive gains have been made in control of HIV, AIDS, malaria and tuberculosis. The number of new cases has fallen worldwide by 40% for all three of those diseases. This translated into nearly 8 million HIV-related deaths averted through the use of antiretroviral drugs, 6 million malaria-related deaths averted through the use of antimalaric drugs and insecticide-treated nets, and 35 million tuberculosis-related deaths 
averted through proper prevention, diagnosis and treatment between 1990 and 2015. Towards the target year of 2015, the Millennium Development Goals were broadly hailed as a success story and an example of the strength of the UN organization. There was a lot of discussion on how best to prolong and expand the Millennium Development Goals agenda. The agreement was reached that the eight original MDGs would be replaced by as many as 17 Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs, which were broader and more open-ended. Sustainable Development Goals broadly include all of the original Millennium Development Goals, but they added additional targets that became increasingly important to communities in all areas of the planet and relevant to life in the 21st century. The new goals required that the energy use should become more affordable, reliable, modern and efficient, with an increased share of renewable energy. They set targets for economic development and planned levels of consumption that can be supported by the global, regional and local environments. Global trend of massive and rapid urbanization brought about considerations of infrastructure development to support life in large cities. Concerns over the climate change have increased, leading to increased political commitment to address it. Old and new conflicts brought about targets that would ensure lasting peace in many regions and human rights to be respected by all governments. Although global health targets do not feature as prominently in the new Sustainable Development Goals as they did in the Millennium Development Goals, all of the 17 new goals should have a beneficial effect on health of the entire human population. In the Millennium Development Goals, many health urgencies were identified which needed immediate attention, such as preventable maternal and child deaths, or global pandemics of infectious diseases. With substantial progress achieved in their control, SDGs place an increased emphasis on acting on common risk factors that underlie many human diseases, from tackling poverty and lack of education, to empowering women, securing peace, ensuring clean water, sanitation and sufficient energy for everyone, controlling consumption, optimizing urban living, and protecting the environment in which we all live together. Reaching those targets towards 2030 would mean healthier and more fulfilling lives for billions of people who are still deprived from such opportunities today.